<clears throat> so uh, let me first uh, thank uh, UGCS for hosting us here. And um, today we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, single rotor uh, helicopters, uh, which uh, can be used in a variety of uh, applications. Uh, here we can see a couple of photos uh, with uh, different payloads. Helicopters are capable of carrying uh, different uh, payloads or multiple payloads at the same time. And uh, that can save us uh, time and uh, can also make uh, our work uh, easier, uh, depending on uh, our applications. So let's start, let's say a few general uh, <clears throat> features of uh, a helicopter and um, what to differentiate a single rotor helicopter from a different kind of uh, drones like airplanes and uh, multicopters or a vertical taking of uh, airplanes. So the helicopter, of course, has uh, the ability to take off and land vertically. Uh, it does not require a special uh, runway or anything else. And uh, it can be used easily in uh, many different uh, kinds of uh, terrains and uh, different places. Also, uh, the helicopter has the ability to hover, uh, fly with an, a variety of speeds. Um, Helicopter can hover and uh, can start flying at very low speeds without um, affecting its stability. Um, the main characteristic of the helicopters is that they are stable uh, no matter uh, the flying condition. So a helicopter can be very stable uh, during the first moments of taking off and leaving the ground up to its maximum flight speed. Uh, that means that we, don't, we do not have any transition phases like uh, in uh, VTOLs. And uh, another very important characteristic of a helicopter is that as you start flying, uh, the consumption, the energy needed is lower. So the helicopter consumes, uh, let's say, a lower amount of energy if it is moving. So the maximum uh, energy is consumed on hovering. If we start flying, and uh, specifically for the velos, the optimal flying speed can be from 20 kilometers per hour and uh, up to 60 kilometers per hour. So within this uh, envelope, the power consumption is minimal, which means that we can uh, also fly for longer times. Uh, on, uh, on the other hand, the helicopter is able, because I, I have uh, been asked from uh, uh, people that are using uh, lighters, you know, we, in order to do an effective uh, work and uh, do the best for our sensor, we have to fly at a certain speed which is uh, which helps the lidar to gather best data. So the helicopter has no problem to fly at 10 kilometers per hour, 5, 10, 15, 20. We can choose whatever we need to without any problems. Um, so that's a plus uh, because if you fly an airplane, of course you cannot low your, uh, lower your speed very much because there is a stall at the lower speeds and an airplane cannot fly at low speeds. Or uh, the same for the vertical taking off uh, airplanes. They need, after the transition phase, do, and they are flying with a certain speed, which cannot be very low. So that's, I think that this is something to remember about the helicopters. They can fly at any chosen speed with no, 
other problems, uh, no matter if it is windy or no, or whatever happens. Uh, also, we have the ability to, to transport heavier loads at the higher distance. We can carry heavy bay loads. Um, if we compare an airplane with the, the size of an airplane, or the Velos helicopter with a similar in size airplane, of course, the payload that the helicopter is able to carry, it's much higher. Um, also, we have the flexibility um, to descend fast and in a very controlled, controlled uh, manner. Um, I'm, I, I'm saying this because in uh, multi-rotors, um, in order to descend, we are uh, lower. We are lowering the RPMs of uh, the motors, and this can destabilize sometimes the multi rotor, especially in windy conditions. On the helicopter, uh, Velos is uh, using fixed RPMs, so that's something uh, important uh, to mention. We are flying with a fixed RPM, no matter if we are ascending or descending. So fixed RPMs means that we can descend in a very, very controllable manner and very, very fast or as fast as we need to <clears throat> without affecting uh, uh, the flight characteristics of the helicopter. So that's another plus um, of the helicopters and the Velos UAV. And of course, the helicopter um, and especially Velos in the way it is configured, it is very stable, uh, even in windy conditions. We have test flown the helicopter in uh, wind uh, of uh, up to 50 kilometers per hour or more, and uh, it is usable. We are, I'm not saying that it can fly, it is also usable there. So <clears throat> it can tolerate uh, windy conditions very, very easily. Uh, without scaring, uh, you know, the pilot. And, you know, that's something that we are going to see because we cannot choose when always when we are going to fly. We have to do some work and sometimes the, the weather conditions are not optimal. Uh, Velos UAV can help uh, us there as it can tolerate different uh, flying conditions, uh, temperatures and uh, even uh, a little bit of rain is no problem for the helicopter to fly, as all the electronics are completely covered and uh, secured. So let's move to the next slide. Some advantages, some, okay, let's talk about some more specific uh, <clears throat> characteristics of the Velos uh, UAV system. Uh, the main, the main thing that uh, takes it apart from the other uh, helicopter solutions is that uh, the reliability and the safety of the system. Uh, that was something that we had in our mind from the early steps, the very beginning of Velos Rotors. We wanted to build something that is safe and uh, reliable and easy to use, easy to deploy. So that's why the Velos, the Velos uh, helicopter is fully electric helicopter and does not use any gas power engines and anything like that. I will come to this later and tell you a few differences. Uh, the main, uh, we have, uh, it, let me tell you that the Velos UAV platform is very configurable. So we have the options to share the payload uh, capacity in different uh, cases. We can use higher capacity batteries, lower uh, payload, lower payload uh, weight of payload, or we can use less batteries with uh, higher payload. So it's fully configurable. Uh, we can fly up to 80 minutes. Um, we can also add the helicopter actually uses four 6S batteries, uh, but we can use six of them 
in cases that we need the absolutely maximum flying time and uh, we have a lightweight payload. But the normal uh, <clears throat> flying time, let me tell you that it's uh, we can fly with let's say one kilo of payload. We can fly we can fly more than sixty minutes with that, and still have some uh, reserve in our batteries. And that is with four batteries, not six. Uh, from the other hand, there are cases that we need to fly for not so long. We need let's say that we don't do a survey, but we are. Uh, doing uh, we are video recording something uh, and we need to carry a heavy professional uh, camcorder with a, a heavy gimbal so we can use a payload up to 10 kilos with smaller batteries uh, the flight duration is going to be lower but again we are going to uh, proceed with our task and finish uh, our video recording uh, Another thing that is very important to mention here is that the velocity is very low <clears throat> in maintenance and uh, very, very low cost in maintenance, very easy to service the helicopter to check everything. <clears throat> you don't have to take any part, anything apart. You don't have to remove screws or anything in order to check the helicopter, but it's in good condition and uh, good to go. So, I mean, with just visual inspection, you are able to tell that the helicopter is in good condition and uh, you can proceed with your flight. Of course, from our hand, from our side, we are doing our best to help everyone uh, with technical support and uh, continuous availability of uh, spare parts. Everything is uh, in stock and we are shipping uh, everything within a couple of days. Uh, the helicopter is future proof. Uh, every new module can be incorporated on the system. Um, we, are, we are doing upgrades that uh, can fit to every velocity from the first model we ever produced uh, till the last versions now. We can, everything is uh, interchangeable. So if we have an early version, we can upgrade very, very easily to the last version of uh, the helicopter. And that's very helpful as well and convenient. <clears throat> so main feature of the Velos UAV is that we have a dual motor uh, gearbox. Uh, that's a system that uh, makes Velos very, very reliable and safe platform. Um, the helicopter is designed to keep flying with, uh, let's say, with one of the two motors in operation. So it's a twin uh, motor helicopter that can fly with only one in operation. And if something happens um, during the flight, uh, it gets isolated automatically and you keep flying with the rest. Of course, the good thing is that uh, now with the UGCS integration, we are able to tell uh, what's going on. And uh, of course, if something is wrong, uh, we can tell from the telemetry and we can uh, cancel our mission and uh, come back and land uh, the helicopter and our payload safely. And that's the core of our system, the uh, dual motor redundancy. Um, we believe that it's very, very helpful because you know, you know everyone, <clears throat> Uh, every every businessman, every company wants to be successful and uh, save money. Uh, the payloads are also cost uh, some amount of money, which is not uh, neglectable. They are expensive payloads, lidars, uh, high-end cameras, high-end sensors. We have to protect our payload <clears throat> because we have seen in other cases with different uh, drones, uh, a crash can uh, not only damage the drone itself, but also in the payload. And that can be very expensive for the, for the end user and the company that is using. So that is why we have done our best to make sure that every payload uh, 
that is getting around uh, by a very skilled coder will be safe, secure, and will uh, finish the mission with the uh, uh, with the great success. <clears throat> with great success, yeah. Uh, let's, okay, this is about. If you have any questions about uh, everything about what we are talking now, we will answer this, or we can contact later. So now with the UGCS, um, we can uh, we can monitor all the um, the all the important telemetry values from our uh, computer screen. We can uh, check the RPMs of the main rotor. We can check the current consumption of uh, the motor, the voltage level of uh, the batteries of the helicopter. Helicopter actually uses two different um, circuits of uh, batteries, the high voltage and the low voltage one. Um, both of them are uh, redundant, and we can check the condition of both of them from uh, our telemetry. Uh, we have the ability to control the helicopter from two or more different bases. Um, we have uh, we are cooperating with companies that are using the helicopter for uh, long missions, so they are using one pilot to take off from one certain place, and then another pilot in a different place takes over and is there to just land the helicopter. Uh, and it's something that we can do through UGCS as well. Um, of course, uh, many people, from my uh, point of view, UGCS gives the helicopter one major advantage, and that's that is to make the the using of the helicopter even simpler and uh, easier. So. That is why we are very happy that um, we have done this process with the uh, UGCS, and um, we believe that this will also open up some new possibilities. It simplifies the use and uh, makes the surveying missions very, very easy and uh, straightforward. But it can also be used in search and rescue missions and different kinds of uh, applications. So it's it's something, it's a, a combination that we, I believe is going to be very, very effective and is going to help many pilots uh, be successful with their uh, missions and their tasks. So, <clears throat> let me see. Yeah, uh, let's, let's talk about some differences between um, electric uh, power and uh, gas power. Uh, gas power has um, the advantage of long time, long flying time, if everything goes well. Uh, because there are some uh, downsides uh, by performance if, if you are using a gas power helicopter. It's the, mainly it's the vibrations from the gas power engine, it's the heat generated by the exhaust and the smoke. Um, this can also affect the payload and uh, if you have LiDAR or other uh, sensitive uh, sensors on board. Um, <clears throat> gas power engines needs uh, maintenance. Uh, they need to get maintained very, very often. Um, they need uh, more time to precisely adjust the mixture of gas and everything. Uh, and in, in the end of the day, make the work, the work a little bit harder. So electric power is plug and play. You just charge your batteries, you plug in your batteries, and you have a safe and reliable uh, system, easy to deploy and uh, easy to use. Another um, uh, Another downside of gas power engines is that you don't have any redundancy. They can quit anytime. Uh, and 
that that's going to be a bad day. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, gas powered used to be used to be a nice solution a few years ago, but now with the technology of the new technology and the electric power systems and uh, the evolution of electric power systems and redundancy that we are offering with Velos UAS. Uh, it's a, I think it's a much a much better solution and uh, straightforward and easy and safe solution. Uh, Velos <clears throat> has been used from many different uh, companies in uh, all over all over the world uh, for for many different applications. Um, aerial mapping and surveying, of course, is one major application for uh, our system. And um, search and rescue applications uh, are also very, very popular the, couple, the last few years. Um, we are using, uh, we have uh, some, we have tried different uh, payloads and we have seen that um, Having a Velos UAV coupled to a UCCS software can help you scan an area uh, very effectively and very easily without um, needing a lot of uh, input from the pilot. So we can uh, plan our um, search area uh, from before and we can uh, take off and have the helicopter scan the area. Uh, with uh, thermal cameras, night vision cameras, uh, all of these can be incorporated in Velos. Um, we can also have uh, lighting systems. We have made we have made a few different combinations of these payloads, and uh, depending of you know the use, if you are in a forest or if you are in the sea or uh, the place we are using, you choose the best possible equipment for the application. But uh, we have tested the, the system with uh, many different uh, payloads and uh, we are pleased with the, with the performance. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the Velos UAV uh, offers a universal payload array that makes the mounting of uh, different payloads a very easy task. Uh, and also gives you the capability to mount uh, more than one payload, so you can you can compare you can combine uh, a gimbal with a thermal and uh, visual camera, and also you can use uh, <clears throat> a, a light system and uh, a, a high definition video transceiver. Perhaps you can use a uh, some safety devices that you can uh, throw on uh, some person. We can have we, we have we have system that you can throw some materials or a first aid kit with uh, a parachute uh, to any search and rescue mission. Or um, you can use a helicopter for uh, many different kind of inspections. Um, there is also the, the new um, one, one, one capability of the Velocity AV is the POR system, which also has a second uh, payload area. So um, instead of having only one payload area on, uh, on the belly of the helicopter, we have another one on the top, on top over the rotating rotor. Um, there, there is also a passage for wiring, so you can mount. Uh, your LiDAR GPS receiver there, and in order to have a clear sky view without have, uh, having anything uh, over it, not even the blades, uh, or you can have in a different application a ballistic parachute that can uh, further increase the safety of the helicopter, so it, it can, you know, it can hold everything, the helicopter together with the payload, and bring it down uh, safely. You can also combine payloads on uh, the POR payload area. 
So you can use a GPS receiver together with uh, something else, maybe a beacon, maybe it's the ballistic parachute. There are many combinations. We, we have tried to make the helicopter um, very adaptable in order to be able to satisfy different uh, needs for uh, different applications. Uh, we have customers in uh, many different countries and uh, some of them, you can see some of them are here on the slide. We are also cooperating with uh, uh, companies that they, they do not, uh, you know, they are, they do not do have to take any publicity on their projects. Um, in changing the payload of the, on the belly of the helicopter is a very easy task. We can, uh, in, uh, you know, within minutes, we can change the payload and, uh, you know, configure the helicopter for completely different uh, applications. So it's, I will call it like a tool, a universal tool that you can use it for many, many different things. And um, the universal payload rail underneath can give you the flexibility to adapt it to many, many different uh, applications. Uh, for example, in this photo, we can we have a combination of uh, high power uh, uh, lighting together with uh, night cameras for search and rescue missions. Again, here with uh, a lidar. If, if you see on the, the picture on the left, there is a lidar uh, and the GPS receiver for the lidar is mounted on the top of the on top of the rotating main rotor, so we have a clear sky view for uh, better uh, data quality. Again, here we have. Guys, we have a, a, a question. Can mm -hmm. I adapt uh, with whatever camera of the market? Yes, adapting a different. <clears throat> it's easy to adapt, uh, very easy to adapt uh, different uh, cameras. Uh, the we are offering um, a silicon dampening base that can uh, dampen the vibrations uh, to very very low levels and. Uh, can enable the use of uh, many different cameras. Usually, uh, the, the only the uh, what is required to mount a camera is an adapter that will uh, get between the camera and the universal payload rail. This is something that we can uh, make very easy uh, and help uh, a customer with the you know, with the, the payload, the pay, the payload uh, mounting. Yeah, the mounting, yes. Um, I will give you some words about using the VELOS rotors in combination with UGCS uh, in the survey world. Um, those, using UAVs from a, a, a surveyor perspective, um, Clients come with different kinds of uh, questions and we need to, to resolve this. Um, the request for different sensors, so whether it's photogrammetry, video, LIDAR, um, every survey has a different type of sensor. Um, the areas, the, the, the areas of interest uh, are always different kinds of sizes and shapes. Some are small and some are very big areas. So the use of a UAV and the choice of the UAV is very important here. Um, we have different type of platforms, different type of UAVs with different types of batteries. And this will say something about the endurance. So how long can we fly? All these things needs to be in perspective. Um, if you have a survey area, 
you have all sorts of different positions in the area. So if you want to fly a square, for instance, you're most of the time not able to start in the middle of the, um, uh, of the area. Usually it's somewhere on the side. So the, the, the flight time to fly from your takeoff area to the start of the survey or the restart of the survey has to edit, be added as well. And that will um, yeah, take off the time of the, the, the survey um, that you can do. Um, you have to do lots of movements within an area of interest. So maybe if you have a survey area um, that you uh, plan 10 flights in, then you have to move your, your, your gear maybe five, six, seven times uh, to move to another location. Um, and these things need to ta be taken into account. So if you have a more complex UAV to fly, um, you have to pack everything together, move to another area, uh, take your chargers, whatever you have. So um, all these things take into account how long um, a, a survey will last. Um, and then, of course, if you have different kinds of platforms, um, then you need, uh, in certain times, um, different kinds of software solutions for your flight planning. Uh, and monitoring. And that means switching, that means understanding for the pilot. Um, and this is some of the beauties where you have, uh, for instance, UGCS that you can use on different clients of platforms. Um, I will, will not go over all the platforms that there are out there, um, but I fly, I flew a lot of them. Um, for instance, with a wing, um, a wing are, is, is a limited and or a fixed payload that you can have. Uh, usually there is a standard camera mount in and you only use it for that type of survey. Um, wings are very sensitive to wind. Uh, you need to fly always crosswind with wings because if you have head or tail winds that really affect your speed and you want the speed to be more constant. Um, Usually the wings have a propriety flight planning. Uh, so you can only use that. It's, it, it's, it's a different kind of um, uh, survey that you do with it. What I find uh, difficult with the wing is the belly landing. Um, you really crash the airframe, you, you damage it. Um, wings have high speed and cannot move it. Um, with the wing and also uh, you have uh, if you have your area of interest that you need to survey, you have to, on your line turns, you have to create lots of overhead and you fly lots more space uh, over your area of interest uh, using these type of, um, of, of, of survey UAVs. And then of course, um, you're limited to the amount of, of, of weight you can uh, use as payload. Multi-rotors, um, very interesting. I fly a lot with them, uh, very easy. Can fly, cannot fly that fast, cannot fly that big areas of interest. You always, and I will have some sample about it. You will have multiple flights uh, in an area of interest. So that means that you have to uh, relocate. The beauty of a multi-rotor, of course, is that it can carry all sorts of sensors. And a lot of these types are supported uh, in flight planning by UGCS. And that's where I started years ago. Um, the, the weight of the payload is, is very limited. Now this is really up for discussion. Um, I demonstrate here in a DGI matrix, but there are out there a lot of multi-rotors that can carry much more, can fly longer, etc. Um, it's, it's, it's some choice. As Aris already mentioned, uh, the thing with a multi-rotor is to descend, to um, climb, to turn, you always, or it always needs to uh, affect the, some of the rotor, some of the engines. So that's, that's um, not so efficient. Um, if we talk about, this is, a, a, as an example, um, 
an area that I had to fly. This is in the UK. Um, and as you can see here, I have planned multiple missions within one flight. And that's just because uh, a single uh, system, and in this case, uh, the multi-rotor, cannot fly bigger areas. Uh, and it not it cannot change uh, that easy um, the, 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 the flight lines that it needs to, to fly. Uh, in this case, I could easily get this um, survey on, on this side of the, the highway um, in, one, in one flight with a, with a single rotor. Um, and here you have some difficulties where you have to cross from uh, one area to another area within a single area of interest. Um, this is very diff was difficult for me uh, to transition. So I had to create here multiple flights uh, because I couldn't find uh, a good escape route uh, to safely transition from one area where I was allowed to fly to another. Uh, then we have now the VTOLs. Uh, vertical takeoff and landing. So instead of uh, the wing, um, you have um, a wing that, that can take off uh, vertically. Um, again, these types of, of, of UAVs have a limited and or fixed payload inside. So usually you use it for one uh, type. Again, it's also sensitive for wind. You need to fly it crosswind, otherwise you sit with, with your, your, your speed. A lot of them have proprietary flight planning. So uh, moving from one um, uh, UA, type of UAV, one platform to another um, is more difficult. Um, it only flies at the high speed, well, at least the stall speed. And that's something uh, starting at uh, 50 kilometers an hour. Um, so you can't really do detailed um, uh, recordings. It cannot hoover. And as Aris already explained, in transition time, it doesn't have any aerodynamics. So once you start flying, so you, you, you vertically climb, at that moment, there's absolutely no aerodynamics. If something happens with one of the engines, uh, then it will um, not continue to fly and it will return to Earth. Um, so transition is, is, is a thing. Uh, and in my findings, the VTOLs have a hard to keep altitude. They're kind of um, uh, dolphining um, uh, and can't maintain uh, the AGL that you requested it to. Now with the Phalos uh, single rotor, it's, uh, that's where I was looking for already for many years for a platform that gives me the longer flight time um, that can be uh, adjustable in speed. So it should be able to fly slow. It should be able to fly fast. And sometimes it should be able to hoover for your survey projects. Um, I'm looking for something that's aerodynamic from the moment it takes off the ground. Um, it needs to have a long endurance on a, on a single battery load, and it should be able to load different kinds of sensors, either um, in different times or uh, different sensors at the same time. With the VELOS, one of the, the, the biggest advantages is, is all the com components being redundant. Uh, Ari spoke already with the dual um, engine. Um, so it continues to fly even if it has some sort of problems. Uh, it doesn't mean that you continue your survey, but you should be able to de detect the problem and at least return to home or find uh, a spot where you can safely land um, outside of an area with, with a lot of people or something like that. Um, I was told already about the, 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 the mounting rail. Um, you see here the red area with all the, the, the bolts you can mount on. So um, taking care of the center of gravity 
um, you can move your sensor uh, in every space under um, under the helicopter. And that's a big advantage that with different types of sensors of combinations of sensors, you can move uh, your payload so you will stay within the center of gravity uh, in your combination. And even um, if you want to fly with different types of battery settings, uh, this is of course the beauty uh, in, in the flexible mounting that you have. Um, here you can see um, a LiDAR sensor that I mounted uh, under the Velos. Um, try to find the, the, the right spot. This is um, a, a LiDAR sensor together with an RGB sensor. Um, and you put it on the right spot. Um, I even use uh, external GNSS antennas for the um, uh, LiDAR sensor for the IMU, so that you can, um, and, and this is very flexible where you can uh, add certain uh, additions that you want with the helicopter. And of course, the beauty is that the Velos flies on R2 pilot, which is, which is very open and trusted. There are, are hundreds of thousand copies out there uh, R2 Pilot is, is one of the safest um, uh, flight computers it's out there and uh, it completely supports and in, implements MapLink. And this MapLink is the, 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 the connection between Velos and UG, uh, UGCS and the reason why we can now fly UGCS. Um, the MEFLINK uh, takes care of all the messages uh, from the flight computer. So all your telemetry, and this is uh, in both directions. So you can send commands to the flight computer and you can receive the telemetry from. Now to um, implement uh, this extra telemetry, there was no much room in the screen of UGCS anymore. Uh, to really demonstrate the specific helicopter um, uh, telemetry parameters that you need uh, while in flight. Um, so UGCS came up with the, 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 the part on the left, on the right side of the screen, um, which can display and, and signal uh, specific telemetry values that you want. Um, for instance, the standard um, uh, battery uh, monitoring is happened still within the UGCS uh, main window. And this is what we call um, within Mufflink, the battery type one. Within the telemetry, we really need to uh, monitor the, 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 the voltage of the, the engine. Uh, which runs over 50 volts and uh, the consumption on the engine. So I created on this screen uh, the battery voltage and the consumption. Now at this moment, uh, it's standing still. So there's no consumption on the battery. Uh, but once it starts flying, you see, you can see and monitor uh, the consumption on the ESCs that are out there. Um, I've put on uh, a laser sensor for altitude uh, for automatic landing. And you can see here that the sensor that's mounted uh, reports 1.4 meters above ground. Uh, this laser, specific laser sensor um, is able to measure up to 100 meters above ground. So in auto landing, uh, that's very handy. So you can see here live uh, monitoring the, 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 the altitude that you're flying at. Another very important parameter that you need to monitor is the RPM that the, the, the engine runs. Um, so once it starts running, you will see here the RPM somewhere between 1200, 50 and 1300. And this RPM needs to be constant. And here it's shown red because the uh, RPM is below uh, the specification, below the range. Uh, so it will give you a, um, a, a signal of it. Um, 
I've put here also rail voltage, so you can see uh, on all the electronics um, that there is enough rail. Um, you see the main current that will be used and you can add additional um, uh, widgets to monitor parameters that you need. Um, I've been asked also to tell a little bit about a survey workflow. In this case, a workflow that, um, uh, that I do for a LiDAR survey. First of all, and that's, that's completely for your flight planning, um, that you can do it offsite. So you can start to use GCS um, at home or at the office space. You have your, in this case, irregular uh, shape that you need to fly. Um, you create some points on the, 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 the edges of your areas of interest and it will create your flight plan. You can immediately see uh, the amount of time that it takes to endure of the, 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 the distance that you need to fly. Um, you have your parameter, you set your parameters for altitude, line spacing, etc., and everything comes out. Um, in your offsite planning, um, you can check your system uh, before you go, you charge your batteries, you make everything um, ready for the air, for the survey and you prepare all the paperwork uh, to do your flight. On site, um, you set the GNSS antenna for uh, monitoring your RINEX data. Um, doing this will eliminate uh, the RTK option. Um, I, from a user perspective, from an end user, I don't like RTK. So I will always do post-processing. So I have in the area, I have um, an RM, uh, a GNSS station running, recording the data for correction. And the um, uh, on-site preparation, you prepare your, 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 your computer for the flight planning. You set it up, you send the flight to, um, in this case, uh, the VELOS or your, 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 your other um, uh, platform that you want, want to use and you do your flight. You don't have to, to change everything anymore because you've done your pre-flight uh, planning and you know how to work. And then you go back off-site and you do your post-processing. And this is, of course, when that's with all the um, um, surveys that you do, you have to get all sorts of data together. So in this case, for a LiDAR survey, you will get your raw laser data, your IMU recording, so you can see your position and attitude um, of the sensor that you used. Um, you use level arms, that's the measurement between the, the head of the, the, the laser recording and your GNSS antennas that you have. You have your angles that uh, is a sort of calibration. And of course, you need your RINEX files. Um, so from different parts, you need to have different um, um, data that you have to combine. Now, every um, uh, sensor manufacturer integrator has his own proprietary um, uh, post-processing software that eventually will create in the case of, of LiDAR, your LiDAR uh, loss file for you. Um, if you do a combination, you um, have separately your JPEG images and in the combination, as I demonstrated here on the, uh, the, 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 the setup that I've created here, there is an RGB camera together with the LiDAR sensor uh, and you have measured the, ex, uh, the, different, the distances between the, the center of the lens and the center of the laser and you have connections between the laser, uh, the IMU that's within the laser and the RGB camera. So at that moment, you can at um, uh, processing time, you can uh, create the external orientation to create georeferenced images. 
So basically that's a, a, now you read the survey workflow for LiDAR, but basically the same counts for photogrammetry. Um, you have your pre-flight uh, pre planning, you have your on-site preparation and flight, and you have your post-processing. Um, here, there is um, a, a short video of a fully autonomous flight uh, I made together um, with Velos integrated with UGCS. Uh, and this is, for instance, an example where we can start doing delivery flights. Um, this will become uh, and is already a great interest uh, in the market for delivery flights, uh, which basically go from waypoint A to waypoint B. Uh, but in the meantime, something can happen. Uh, we have ADSB on, uh, on board. And we see that there's another aircraft uh, coming in the vicinity. So you have to divert. And for instance, in, in UGCS, you can click and give a, a diverted um, waypoint where it should go. Uh, and after the, 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 the aircraft or, or helicopter passes by, you can return to the original waypoint B uh, and go to your destination. Well, basically, these are types of, of usages um, of, of the combination of uh, a platform, and in this case, very optimal platform, the helicopter, together with UTCS. Um, that's basically a little bit the story I wanted to share with you. Here is one of, one of the question is, um, this helicopter can use camera and LiDAR in the same time? Yes. Yes, if my uh, my um, screen is still shared. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, here you see uh, the LiDAR and the RGB camera uh, used in the, at the same time. Um, now you want to point that you want to know exactly uh, where the image is taken. So that's why there's a, con a connection between the, the camera um, and the laser sensor and there's a position device inside that knows exactly on, on, on yeah, centimeter, millimeter level where the picture is taken. So you can combine afterwards the points that you take at that moment together with the, the image that's taken. Great. Thanks. Uh, John is asking, what is the maximum wind speed uh, which can be tolerated by the helicopter? We have tested the Velos UAV version 2 in uh, 55 kilometers uh, uh, per hour wind speed. Uh, and actually, it was uh, working perfectly well. We have tested also the flight through the uh, GPS and the mission planner. Uh, and and uh, what we have seen is that uh, it could also uh, be able to operate in a higher wind speed as well. But the 55 kilometers per hour it was tested. The question from Juan, will the Velos have the same integration solutions the UGCS has with DJI drones, such as uh, magnetometer, bathymetry, laser, metal detection? Uh, so the, actually the answer can be split it into two parts. So because Velos uh has a pixel based autopilot and our integrated solutions are now compatible with pixhawk uh and with our pilot firmware so the answer is yes but of course uh, for some applications uh, uh especially high frequency gpr uh or the sonar actually wh when the drone has to fly extremely low uh Actually, that has to be just tested separately. So technically, yes. Uh, so Velos can carry any of our integrated uh, uh, industrial sensors. But uh, from practical point of view, uh, of course, each sensor has to be considered separately just because each sensor has a different uh, working altitude. And maybe for extremely low and extremely slow flights, uh, it will be just a bit suboptimal. So please, uh, actually, if you have interest to a specific sensor, just, just send separately a message. We can 
uh, uh, discuss it uh, together with uh, also with Wallace team uh, and see if it is feasible or not. I hope that answers your question. Okay, thank you. Yes, so UGCS at uh, UGCS.com is the email you can reach out to or just respond to the email invitation which you received uh, for this webinar. And yes, we will get in touch with all involved which need to participate. So. Uh, there's another question, Sabine, from Marco. Yes. To answer it live, that it says if the helicopter can use camera and LiDAR at the same time. And uh, I could answer to him, uh, yes, because there is a lot of space in the payload rail that uh, Bart showed you. And on top of that, the maximum weight is around 10 kilos. So I think there is enough, uh, depending, of course, on the LiDAR and the camera, but in the most uh, common, let's say, commercial LiDARs and cameras, we have seen people using them together with a gimbal, and we have people doing uh, different combinations, like a camera and thermal camera or a multispectral camera, the one of them with a gimbal. Uh, and a LiDAR as well. So as uh, far as the, the total sum of weight is around 10 kilos, there is enough space to use them both. Great, thank you. So um, here's also a question. Are the batteries easily re replaceable at the field? Uh, yes, actually there are, um, as Aris mentioned before, there are four batteries, two per engine because there is a twin engine uh, model, the Velos uh, helicopter, and there are two batteries, there are LiPo batteries, 6S, and uh, you can easily have another set that you can, when you land the helicopter, uh, you can open the cover and just uh, easily add other four batteries, the two for the one engine and two for the other engine, because we have redundancy, and this is very easy. I mean, you can do it in uh, two minutes if you have ready and charge the batteries, of course. Actually, uh, the Velos is uh, <clears throat> very easy with the batteries. It uses four 6S LiPos. The capacity can vary from 10,000 milliamps up to 25,000 milliamps. Uh, we do not uh, need specific batteries for, the, for this uh, UAV. That means that uh, you can use probably, if you have your own batteries or purchase your a good uh, quality 6S uh, battery and use it uh, with the Velos UAV. We are using XT90 connectors for this purpose. Luis asks, LiDAR and hyperspectral cameras are very sensitive to vibration. How the Velos handles this? In general, Velos is a, a very low vibrating uh, helicopter because it's uh, electric. It do not, does not use a gas power engine. So it's, it considers, uh, considered to be a very, very low in vibration helicopter. Uh, in addition, we are offering a vibration isolating base, which is made from uh, silicon dampening uh, inserts, and that can uh, dampen the vibrations uh, completely for uh, vibration sensitive uh, payloads. We were discussing Aris before about the turbulence in the very sensitive sensor. It is the anti-vibration mount. If yeah. you see it on the left, the special silicon anti-vibration mount that reduces even further the very low uh, vibrations of the helicopter. And this, we, it is used for uh, very, very sensitive sensors for higher accuracy. From uh, my friend, Bradley Kraus, uh, he asks, what's the estimated flying time with the five kg payload? when flying with 10 meters per second. So 10 meters per second should be about 36 kilometers per hour. Uh, that, in, in that uh, speed, the helicopter can fly more than approximately 40 minutes, should be 30 to 40 minutes, something like that. Uh, but we can, uh, it's an easy way to calculate that um, and, uh, you know, have a real number, um, you know, the, the, let me tell you some real numbers here so you can do your calculations. The helicopter on uh, hovering with uh, five kilos payload consumes about 35 amps. Uh, while when we are uh, 
when we are flying at with cruising speed, it's uh, the, the consumption goes down to 25 amps. So it's a big difference from hovering to flying uh, forward. So if we can, we can calculate the flying time with um, a consumption of 25 amps. Uh, so the 25 amp hours with a 25,000 milliamp battery means that we have one hour of flight. Of course, we cannot consume all of uh, the battery. We cannot consume 25,000 milliamps. So it's going to be less than this because we need to save some for uh, reserve. <clears throat> and uh, because we have, this is for two batteries and one motor, but they are, they are identical. So whatever happens for one motor, exactly the same thing happens for the other motor. And something that I forgot to mention before is that uh, the twin motor mechanism does not help all, only for the redundancy, <clears throat> but it's always helpful and makes the helicopter uh, more reliable because everything is loaded to half of its maximum capacity. So during the normal operation, because we have everything double on board, uh, all these components are operating on the half of its maximum capacity. And that makes the helicopter very reliable and uh, the maintenance intervals are very, very long. <clears throat> and I would like to, and to close, uh, last thing uh, I would like to say is that like everything, the, the single rotor helicopter and the velocity UAV is a very useful tool, not for everything, but for specific applications. So I believe that I have seen people trying to do uh, specific uh, things with multicopters while they could do a better and easier work with a helicopter. It's not the best for every possible application, but for many applications, it's a better solution that can prove and uh, you know, that can be more and more effective than a multicopter or an airplane. Of course, and the others have good, uh, and they are good at other use cases. But in certain use cases, helicopter has an advantage. And that's something that I would like to mention. Okay, great.